Okay, we have a preliminary look at a 1913 Victrola, the 16th. Uh, in 1913, this was the largest production Victrola they made, I believe, for the average person. Well, not the average person. This was a rich man's Victrola. This was, you know, the one percenters Victrola. And in this year, it still has, it has a new configuration. It no longer has the L doors in it that it had since 1906. It has two small doors on top, two larger doors at the bottom for your record storage. No more L door. It still has a lot of the carvings on the cabinet. As you can see, all this Gothic carving here, here, it's all hand carved, by the way. All hand carved on here. And it's got uh, none in the back. See, it's got a few little chips here and there. That's normal. Carving is still good here. It's got the shape to it here up here and the, the, the tall lid. This is mahogany, of course. Tall lid. Motor's already out. It's a three spring motor because I'm going to have to service everything. And I can't read it. It's a 10. What does that say? I'll let the camera do the reading on whatever that. I can't read that. On the Victor tag. 10776. 10,176, something like that, with a prefix letter on it. Well, that doesn't matter at the moment. Uh, obviously, the gold plating needs little attention. It has the exhibition reproducer. That needs a lot of attention. It's going to need to rebuild. Rock hard gaskets. <laughs> it's got a little piece of paper. Paul owes Tommy $21,000. Starts off at, I think that's thousand dollars then ten thousand dollars and now it's twenty one thousand dollars and he hid the, the little iou is, is hidden here inside the machine see we got a bunch of needles down there nice condition wood this this cabinet is very solid it was built that way to start with but sometimes age works on them and it, you know they break down but not this one original knobs are still on there this is a one family machine so i was told it came out of an estate sale up there albany and it came with, you can see some of them still in here. These are Victor fiber needles. It came with a mint condition Victor fiber needle cutter, which itself is about a $140 item. Uh, an entire box filled with fiber needles. A full set of record albums. I think they're A through N for this one. Uh, not everyone was full of records. Most of them were the usual stuff from the teens and very early 20s. But all of them very, very clean because apparently they're all trained to use fiber needles. That's what I'm guessing. It just seems to be. He had a lot of uh, effort put into accumulating fiber needles and a needle cutter everything else. Undoubtedly, they were using fiber needles to play the records too. It also came with a small plastic box containing about... 10 different packages, unopened packages of needles from the teens and very early 20s, both Victor, Columbia, and a few other brands. Uh, apparently somebody's needle package collection, because none were open, they weren't using them, and obviously these have a, a pretty significant collector of value. Came with a machine. All of that was included with this. And uh, for a very, very reasonable price, which I'm not going to mention here because I am eventually and of course i had the key too i am eventually going to sell this but uh it needs a lot of work in the meantime it needs to be uh like two tubs of cotton cleanser at the minimum uh the motor needs a full rebuild it might need springs i gotta let's see how uh, strong they are let's see the albums have already been secured elsewhere but you can see where they go everything's nice doors close nicely they're not all cockeyed, and there's no veneer issues on this machine, even on the bottom, nowhere. It's good, and that's what I like to see. I hate dealing with veneer issues. The top, top is nice. I'll show you that again. It's got a few scratches here and there, but that'll blend in. I could blend. There's ways to blend that stuff in. That's normal for a machine this old. That's been in the parlor of the same house for a hundred years. You know, you're gonna get stuff like that. Coffin top. The original Victor coffin top. They would keep this style, I believe, until 1919 or was it 1920? I forget which. And then, of course, this goes through a number of changes. There's like four or five different variations of the 16. Starts off as the various L doors, the VTLAs, which is just an abbreviation for Victrola. 
uh, then it morphs into this. Then it, as time goes on through the teens, these columns on the side here become more and more plain. They tone down the carvings a little bit. A sound doors change a little bit here and there. Uh, not by much, though. Uh, up here changes. The appearance at the top changes. Until you end up by the end as, as something that just looks like a larger version of a regular Victrola, which is a mistake in my opinion. You know, uh, uh, but they did come out with the 17 and the 18, which uh, were fancier versions of this. You know, with all the shaped panels and all of that stuff. Those were, that became their premium models, those two. First, first the 18, and when the 18 proved really too expensive for people, they, they modified it a bit, eliminated some of the fancy woodwork and carvings, but kept the basic look of the machine and called it the 18. So you went from the, I'm going to call it the 17. You went from the 18 back to the 17, and uh, then the 17 becomes the 130, I believe it was, in the 20s. And that's their premium model. Like I said, gold fittings, big cabinet, fancy carvings. This was roughly, I'm going to say, $6,000 in today's money back in 1913. $6,000. Think about that. That's the price of a really nice used car. It is. And this is an era when people just did not make the kind of money that's available to them today. Salaries are not high. Of course, the living wasn't high either. But, you know, you're talking about a major investment, usually beyond even most middle class families, upper middle class, maybe. But definitely the, the wealthy and the super wealthy would have invested in something like this. They were also available in Oak, surprisingly, but they were. In fact, there's even one available right now in Marketplace in Oak. They want 700 bucks for it. It is a clean machine. Problem with these, though, is they're big, they're heavy, they take up a lot of room. And not everybody has the room for that. But they are very, very impressive looking machines and extremely well made. They are the absolute pinnacle of Victor technology of their day. And they, they hold up well over time, as you can see. The finish is definitely showing its age a little bit. It's got some alligatoring here and there. It'll lighten up when it gets scrubbed. And you can see wear points, like the finish has been worn here, like... Like somebody would put their harm here maybe when they were playing it or lifted the lid here a hundred thousand times and it kind of wore to finish a little bit. It's getting light colored all through here. They, as far as I'm aware, they were playing this machine right up until whoever owned the home had passed away. So it's never been really relegated to the attic or the basement or the garage or whatever. And now I'm going to have to scrub it and scrub it and scrub it and scrub it. So that's going to take me quite a while. This is a big machine. There's a lot of real estate there. I hope I have enough cotton cleanser in stock to even do this job. I might have to order some. Put a, re, put a, a reorder in on the cotton cleanser. Meanwhile, it's going to be stored away while I do that. Well, this is the, the preliminary. Oh, did I show the decal? I think I did. And I also have a 17. Not from the same place. Totally different family. The 17 is a different story. That one, <laughs> well, I'll leave that for another video. But uh, that, that's the fancy, fancy Victor. Not the fanciest, but close. And there you go. It's a good look at the Victrola 16. 1913. And it does have wheels on the bottom too, which makes it a lot easier to roll it around. Because even empty, this cabinet is kind of heavy.